Hello everybody, thanks for joining this episode of Sam's Device Advice. This is my second go at this video because the last one I didn't plug in my microphone, so that is incredibly embarrassing. But hopefully that means this will be a better video for you. Today I'm going to be talking about an add-on you can get for Google Forms called Form Publisher. And it's going to allow you to take the information that people add to a Google Form and allow you to spit it out in whatever format that you want to. I promise it'll make a lot more sense as I show you. So let's go ahead and take a look at my desktop. And excellent, it is working indeed. My microphone is checked out and working too. Perfect. Okay, so I've already created a Google Form. If you need a little help creating Google Forms from scratch, check out my other videos in the, uh, the Google Apps for Education playlist. Um, but I've created just a basic contact information form here. As you can see, I have people's phone number, uh, address, name, email. A nice little feature I've added into my email question is response validation. So what that means is I've added an email question. It's a short answer response. But I clicked on the three dots on the bottom right, and I clicked on response validation. That gives me these extra options at the bottom. And I've chosen that I want to make sure that they only type in text and that that text actually uh, spits out as an email address. And I can add a custom error set that says something like, please use a valid email address. So this way they can't accidentally type in the wrong address. Very, very helpful depending on your population. I did the same for phone number, but because I have it as is number, it won't allow you to put in dashes. So that can be a little confusing, so I'm actually gonna turn that off. So I have this form and now I want to use Form Publisher. So I wanna show you first how to get it. In Google Forms to get add-ons, the first thing you do is you're gonna click on your three dots in the top right corner, your overflow button, and then you're gonna go down to the option that says add-ons. I'm gonna click add-ons, and you're gonna find a number of them in here. There's quite a few really cool tools that are in. Um, one that I've seen a lot of people use is called Choice Eliminator. What that does is it allows people to choose something from a dropdown or from a multiple choice question. And once somebody chooses that option, it's not there for the next person. So if you have a potluck and you're asking people to say that they're gonna do a dessert, once somebody clicks dessert, nobody else is gonna see that option. Very handy. However, we're gonna be using one called Form Publisher. So what you're gonna to do to add it is you just need to hover over the add-on you want and click on the plus free button. Um, some of these you would have to pay for, but Form Publisher, we're gonna look at its free version. If you needed to, you could also search for it here. Once I click um, the add and free button, it's going to install it, which you can see I've already done because mine says manage. And then to turn on your uh, form add-ons, you click on this puzzle piece at the very top. So you're going to see I have two here, Form Approvals and Form Publisher. Form Publisher is the one we're talking about today. Form Approvals is actually really handy. It allows you to set up an approval process for a form. So let's say you were using it for a uh, absentee day. Um, you can have it automatically go to three different people and each one needs to sign off and approve that process. Um, so that'll be for another video though. We're looking at Form Publisher. So I'm going to click on this and turn it on. This is gonna let me get started. If I needed some help or some instructions, I would click here, but I'm gonna click get started. And you're gonna see this add-on window show up. So the first page that we get is about our template. So Form Publisher is going to pre-format a template for you, or if you already have one made, you could use this. So I wanna show you what it looks like if you have them create it for you first. And I'm gonna use a Google Doc for this one, and I'm gonna show you later how you could use a Google Slide. So I'm gonna click uh, Google Document, and it's going to create a template for me. And what's really handy is what it does is it takes the responses that people would type in here and it um, makes them as, I'm calling them tags. I don't really know what they're called. Um, I should have looked that up before this video, but don't worry about it. So a tag is where you have these two chevrons on the outside of a word. And as you can see down here, they are the tags for the questions. So it would have the question title, and then this is where this person's response would go. And it does it for each one of the questions um, on my form. And I could customize this, customize this whole page if I want to. I'd probably delete this whole thing up here, um, delete this uh, entire table, and start customizing this table, uh, this sheet if I wanted to. Um, what I could also do is I could create my own template, which I've done, so I'm gonna open that guy up here. And it's not a very pretty one. This was just something I threw together to give you an example. Please don't judge my style. And what you can see here though is that it even has a tag for today. So whenever the person completes this form, it's gonna add that date here. 
Another thing to note is that the formatting that you have of your tags is going to be the formatting you get for all of the responses. So if you wanted this to be bolded, you would bold your tag. If you want it to be underlined, you'd underline it and so on. Wherever you place it and however you make this look is going to be how it spits out in the end. So I'm going to go back to my form and because I actually have my own template, I'm going to click here where it says change template and I'm going to choose the one that I've created. Um, and because Google uh, Picker is going to usually do this by recent, it should be your first one up here. So I'm going to hit select. This is going to be my template I use. Now this form publisher is going to make sure that all of the markers, ah, that's what they call them. They call them markers, not tags. All of my markers are matching. So if I had a question in here that was not represented on my template, it would tell you here, but it looks like I'm all good to go. So I'm going to click next. My next option is going to be for where I want it to save these files. So if I already have a folder set up in my Google drive, I could choose it here. Um, otherwise it just creates this folder for you, which I'm going to use. Um, now for the title, you can have it be whatever title you want to. So I'm going to have this be contact information. And now a handy trick is you can actually use the tags from your quiz as part of your title too. So I'm going to put in name here and now that's going to take whatever they type into this name section and add it to the title of my file. Um, and then you can keep a file URL if you need to, you can make the increments. So if you're going to have a number of these and you want it to track the number, you could do that as well. And then you can decide if you want to keep a PDF copy. Um, I don't need it in this case, so I'm going to leave that off, but it's a nice handy tool to turn on if you need it. I'm going to go ahead and click next. Once I've gone to this page, it's going to bring up my sharing options. So right off the bat, it's saying it's going to send a PDF to my email address. What's handy is that I could add somebody else's email address as well. If I needed to send this to a reception, uh, if I needed to send this to a principal or even to a parent, I would add their email address here. Another fancy thing you could do is you could add the email response from this question so that whoever fills out this uh, form also gets a copy of whatever you're sending. Um, and I could say that they can edit it as the Google Doc or just sends them a, a PDF, which is handy. Um, and then they do have their own approval workflow, which is actually a pretty handy tool, which you could then um, turn on P uh, uh, approvers for this so that once it creates this publisher, it'll get sent to somebody. They would then get the option to approve or deny that request and so on. Um, but we're just looking at the publishing today. So I'm happy with everything here and I'm going to go ahead and click next. What this is going to do, it's now going to let me try out my form so I can show you what uh, this does in the long run. So it opens up my form and I'm going to do Sam's test as my name. I'm going to add my actual email address here and it will send you an email to this with uh, saying that the person has completed it if you're the one who created it and it'll also send your form completer um, their own email. I promise that made more sense in my head when I said that. Um, and just want to show you, if I don't put a .com in here, um, this is where that response validation comes in. So it makes sure that a person types in an email address correctly. Very handy. And I'm going to add in the rest of this information here. Oh, I am not even going to correct that. So please don't judge me too hard. Steve is my contact. And surprisingly, he has the same number as I do. So that's embarrassing. Now I'm going to hit submit. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go back to my Google Drive where I've created this and you can see the folder that uh, Form Publisher created um, and they very creatively call it the out, uh, Outputs folder. I'm going to open this guy up and I'm going to find that uh, form that I've now used. Wow, I'm having trouble explaining what I'm doing here. So it's taken the template that I created and replaced all of these tags or markers with the information that I put in for those questions. So you can see this could be used for a number of different applications, whether it's for um, posters, whether it's for contact information, and there's a lot of other things that I'm forgetting right now. So just pretend that uh, I said a lot of really interesting applications for this. Another option you could do is you can have it uh, spit out your information into a Google slide. So again, I'll quickly show you what that would look like. I'm going to open up a new form. This one is just presentations uh, for students, strengths, hobbies, uh, whatever. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on my um, puzzle piece again, go to my add on for form publisher, and then I'm going to hit get started. While I'm here, I'm going to this time choose a Google slide and it's going to create a template Google slide for me this time instead of the Google doc that I used last. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and edit it so I can see what it looks like. 
And it does have something very similar. So it adds their own title page, and then it gives me two different slides. Um, each slide has its own tags. I could cut and paste these tags wherever I want them to. So if I wanted one per slide, all I would do is highlight this guy, Control X to cut. I'm gonna hit Control M or go to uh, the plus to add new slides, and then just paste them on here. So now um, each slide could have its own response. And I've used this to have students put in important information into a presentation first before they even get a chance to do any editing or beautifying. Because I find if I give my students a Google slide activity, they spend the first 40 minutes making the backgrounds and adding pictures when I really just want them to add their important information. So I've started doing this where I share with them a Google form that has all of the, re the required information that I need from them. And then when I go to the shared page on my second last page, I have it shared directly to their email address. So I would put in the tag for the um, ad recipient and I would hit email. And this time, oops, need those arrows. This time, instead of send PDF, I would say send edit. So that way this person would get their copy of this Google slide that they could edit and I could see them editing as well. So. I know this is a little complex and there's a lot to this, but Form Publisher is an incredible add-on that's free for Google Forms. As a note, they do have a paid version of this that would allow you to use it more than 100 times a month. So if you're using the free trial version, you can use it for 100 publishes each month. And then after that, you would just get frozen out um, or you could purchase it. So at a board level, it's actually a really handy thing to purchase, but for a personal use, uh, the 100 a month seems to be more than enough for me. Alrighty, hopefully this was useful and this was not as confusing as I feel it might have been. If you have any questions, please send your emails to sam at samgoving.com. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and share it to all of your nerdy teacher friends. And I hope you have yourself a great day. Cheers.